Back to My Garden, episode 74. Cue the fun music. Welcome to Back to My Garden. Discover your passion for gardening. Here's Dave Ledoux. Attention landscape and garden designers. Special report reveals how to double your garden design business in 12 months or less. Discover 10 ways to attract better clients while reducing costs. Escape the day-to-day grind of doing all the work yourself. You get instant access at www.backtomygarden.com front slash GD top secret. Brand new. Are you concerned about toxic chemicals, GMOs, and frankenfood? Don't panic. Grow organic. Discover our all-new resource for organic gardeners. Go to www.backtomygarden.com front slash myorganic. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening, depending on where you are in the world when you listen to this. I'm Dave Ledoux, and welcome to another episode of Back to My Garden. And today we got something a little different for you, folks. It's going to be an awesome episode. We're going all the way down to Fayetteville, North Carolina. Jonathan Leonard just finished his second season gardening. He's got the bug like the rest of us do, so he's at that enthusiastic amateur, and he's working on turning pro. He's an aspiring master gardener. He has an amazing career as well. He also teaches professional ballroom dancing. Going to talk about that a little bit. And he works and volunteers at a community garden where he lives. So I want to welcome to the show Mr. Jonathan Leonard. Welcome. Thank you. How's it going? It is going good. I'm really excited that you're here because... You know, it's one thing to have these pro-level gardeners with nine books and 13 television shows, and they know everything about everything. You got some dirt under your fingernails this season, didn't you? I did. Awesome. What I'm going to do, I gave you a little intro. I'm going to turn over the mic to you, Jonathan. Take a minute or two and just uh, tell us a little bit about your background and how did you get into gardening? Sure. Um, Well... When I was younger, probably about 11, my grandfather, who uh, lived in Colorado, had his own little farm, and uh, I used to help him sow the seeds and stuff like that and eat all the food. It was amazing. Um, And then, of course, I grew up being a teenager and stuff. And then a couple years ago, I had a landlady who had a beautiful shade garden, azaleas, hostas, pretty much anything that can grow in the shade she could grow it. And, um, it just really inspired me to, uh, to grow something, to see, you know, something beautiful, some beautiful flower come from the ground from nothing pretty much. And now I've had, yeah, like you said, two summers, um, for vegetable gardening. I also volunteer at the community food bank garden downtown. Um, and I'm working on being a master gardener. Fantastic given us a lot to start with here. It's going to be a great episode. Um, Jonathan and I are going to kick back and talk about gardening. So if you're driving in your car, please don't try to take notes. I'm going to take notes throughout the call, put the links up at the resource page at Back to My Garden. I'd encourage you to follow Jonathan on social media. He's active on Twitter at GardenYoung13, and that's the number 13, GardenYoung13. Right. I'll have a link to that as well in the show notes. So... I'm really smiling because you had an enabler. I always think that most gardeners have either like an Obi-Wan Kenobi or a, a Yoda. There's always a Morpheus from the Matrix. There's always this classic archetype, maybe a grandmother yes. or a father. You don't just wake up and say, I'm going to garden. There's always somebody who kind of takes you under their wing. And for you, it was your landlady with her shade garden. Yes. Her name was Carol. And she, like I said, she could grow pretty much anything. Anything she put her hands on, it could bloom. Amazing. They always seem to know what they're doing, right? They they make it look always. effortless. Yeah, yeah. Good. And so you have, uh, your first garden, though, was, you told me, from your apartment, right? It was. I had, uh, you know, a bunch of pots that I borrowed from my grandma and, uh, put them out as far into the sun as I could get them in my apartment complex. So uh, containers? Yes, sir. Nice. Did you go kind of the uh, like anything goes or did they all kind of match? Uh, No, it was anything goes. Nice. Love thrift shops. Anything that I could put up some dirt into that could drain well, I put a plant in it. 
candid admission is my first container garden. My wife was supervising, but I forgot to drill holes. Oh. And so, uh, and it was, a, you know, you, I had the power drill out. I did like 10 out of 12 or 11 out of 12, but I turned a, one of the buckets into a mud puddle. Uh, mm-hmm. I tell people always make sure you get the holes in the bottom. A neighbor lady of mine did that. I think it's part of, you know, the learning process. You got to get, oh, yeah. got to. So you got these containers at your apartment complex. You're, <laughs> you're the guy taking all the sun in the corner. And what did you grow that first season? Um, I grew some dill. I grew um, potatoes. Um, I grew, what else did I grow? I have these two indoor plants, a bougainvillea, um, which is really, really nice. Um, I think I did carrots. I tried garlic. Um, and that's about it. Wow, I wrote it down. Potato question mark. How did, how did the potato turn out in the container? Surprisingly well. So you what, got some, like a seed potato? Uh, um. Actually, I just went and bought one from the grocery store. It was one that we hadn't used, and it was already sprouting, so I just put it in the dirt. <laughs> oh, that's always a great story. You don't have to buy an expensive seed and just grab a sprouted one. Yeah, and then, as you know, potatoes, I ended up having like 15 or 20 different plants. They all just came, just came yep. shooting up through the, in, the, in the container? Yep. Did you kind of clean it up a bit or just let it run? Um, no, I separated them. Yeah. And then I had a whole bunch, and they actually turned out really nicely. Kind of halfway through this uh, the season, did you have to pile more dirt around it, or did it grow deeper into the bucket? Um, well, I put those ones in pretty deep ones already. Okay. Yeah. There's nothing like the first potato of the year. I know. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. Love potatoes. Where I grew up as a kid, it was very sandy soil, and they grew a little red potatoes. And those little red ones, the first one, like, I have two brothers. It was always a fight to get those potatoes. Mm-hmm. Man, that's good. Yeah, and we, uh, I grew up eating them raw. So just peel them and just, you know, eat them like a little crab apple or something. Nice. Carrots, uh, you, you kind of had hesitation when you said garlic. Yeah. I, uh, again, this is one we didn't quite use the garlic fast enough and it sprouted. So I put it in the ground and, uh, it just kind of rotted, I guess, in the ground or it didn't grow well enough. I'm not sure. Mm-hmm. Actually, that's very encouraging news because if you had said, oh, my first season, everything grew and I went 100%. And, oh, yeah, I yeah, wish. Yeah, yeah. That. Everyone's a little different in their early experiences. I mean, I got to garden at five years old, so. Oh, yeah. I, yeah. That's cool. But I love the city garden idea. Um, I'm testing a new thing for me next year is milk crates. Ah, yeah. I'm actually doing the, like, weird kind of container things, too. I have some friends now who are college-age kids, and I never grew you know, any vegetables when I was college age. And, you, you know, it's so expensive when you're a student to eat out. Yes. Or if you're dead broke, you're boiling noodles all the time. Yeah. <laughs> and so, like, encouraging people, hey, grow something. So the milk crate is a bit of an experiment. I got uh, five for a buck at the recycling plant. Nice. We're going to... You know how they have holes, though, right? They're like a lattice. So I think maybe a cardboard box going to line it with something um landscaping fabric depending on where you're going to put it oh that's a good idea i uh i used landscape fabric to save my sunflowers this year oh did you yeah i had 12 Mm -hmm. and late august maybe the beginning of september i saw a flash of blue and two blue jays i don't know where they came from and they found my sunflowers and every morning at 8 o'clock, I'd go running out like a crazy person chasing away birds from mm-hmm. my crop of sunflowers. But we had to wrap four of the heads with duct tape and old landscape fabric. 
and son so of a gun. So you can keep the seeds. Yeah, it worked. I mean, okay. the Blue Jays destroyed. When I say destroy, they ripped the head to pieces. So there's only oh like gosh. an eight foot stalk left. Yeah. And uh, so I went to my gardening mentor, being my father, and he said, "Well, I got I got a suggestion to deal with the Blue Jays." And I said, "Well, you cannot shoot Blue Jays in a town. You'll you'll get a ticket or go to jail." So, um, do you? Do you save the seeds to plant for the next year, or do you hang them upside down for the birds to eat in the wintertime? With these ones, um, we grew a mammoth and Mr. Uh-huh. Fothergill. And okay. I actually, in October, clean them out of the head with my thumbs into a pail, then clean out the seeds by hand out of the pail, put them on a cookie sheet, soak mm-hmm. them, or sorry, in a bucket with brine, like, like um, salty water. Mm-hmm. Then lay them in a cookie sheet and roast them for 40 minutes. Yum. Months. Okay. That's even better. That kind of is my calendar end of the season routine or ritual. Okay. Yeah. That's cool. Because you know where I live in Toronto or mm-hmm. southern Ontario, it's starting to become fall. Right. But you're kind of a warmer zone. I mean, what do you get, snow once a winter, twice a winter? Um, yeah, and it, well, it usually doesn't, yeah, and it doesn't usually come until the beginning of the following year. So, like, we probably won't get snow until January. Do you get kind of a killing frost, though, like in October or November? Um, we did this year, and then once it got down that low, it hasn't really gotten that low again. But t- okay, so let me rephrase the question is, sure. when do you pick your carrots? Do you ever um, leave them in for a while? Yeah. My, I still have carrots in the ground right now. <laughs> Fantastic. Fantastic. We mulch pretty well, though. Yeah. Um, and then, yeah, we they'll still be good. I could probably pick them right before Christmas or so. They just get sweeter as they get a little older in the in them. Mm-hmm. Do, you, do you ever grow parsnips? No. <laughs> For my, I love them, yeah, though. Yeah, they're like a giant white carrot, but they taste yeah. a little different. My parents are way further north. They're in northern Alberta, so think mm-hmm. like Minnesota kind of weather. Okay. They leave them in the garden over the winter. And in the spring, they harvest their parsnips, and they are sweet and delicious. And they'll huh. throw them like in the crock pot or the stew pot. Right. We tend to do that a lot with like potatoes. Yeah. This has kind of been my aha doing these podcasts is I'm meeting amazing people who you kind of go from all of a sudden talking about gardening then to the cooking and eating side. Yeah. You know, and and uh, big fan. I mean, I love crock pot and slow cooker. and Oh, easiest way to cook. Let's talk about that because you volunteer some of your time at the food bank. I do. What's that been like for you? It's an amazing opportunity. It is... Um, very inspiring to see the changes that you can make just from a couple of hours a month. Is uh, well, how big's Fayetteville? Half a million? Um, well, we have Fort Bragg here, so it depends on if you count Fort Bragg. There's a lot of people. We're like one of the fourth largest city in the state, maybe third. So you have families that are in need. Oh yeah. Yeah. More surprising on the military side than you might think. Mm, I've been hearing that it's pretty rough. Like they come back and they don't really yeah. have a lot of opportunities. Yes, yes. Then you yeah. add in the yeah, PTSD. Yeah, that's a whole other topic. Yeah. yeah, that's a... Yeah. And so, so you're giving back to the community through the food bank and then your food bank grows as well, right? Is that how it works with the community garden? Well, um, uh, we don't have enough plots to really donate any food to the food bank right now. Hmm. Um, I mean, because we're talking, we have like 20 four by fours. So it's not really enough to uh, to give to the food bank. They actually use it more of an education and demonstration garden for the community. Uh, uh, the 24 by fours, are they on a raised bed or just kind of on the ground? Well, we've got... Um, Let's see, how many do we have? We've got four that are raised but sitting on the ground. You know, they're like, Mm -hmm. they've got the plywood or whatever size. And then we've got four that it was a demonstration on how to build handicap accessible beds. Mm -hmm. 
So we have those that are about mm, maybe four or five feet off the ground. I'm going to have to give you the link to episode, let me see, I'll tell you right now, episode 71, Mick Pulteney. He leads a community garden over in England, Mm -hmm. and they got some government financing to do just like you're talking about, wheelchair accessible, and then also for learning disabilities. Ah, Um, we didn't even think about the learning disability side. There's a subreddit on reddit.com of Uh uh, just a forum where people who have been asked by their medical or physician doctors to take up gardening as therapy. Really? And on the subreddit, they share their health benefits of gardening, both physical as well as obviously emotional, especially people under stress. Wow, very cool. And I mean, speaking that whenever we get into the therapy side, um, one of the master gardeners that works with us at the community garden, she also runs um, the uh, like a Wounded Warrior Project Horticulture 101 class that's like six weeks and and only veterans and Wounded Warrior Project members can attend the class and they practice they get like a certificate um, and she does the Warrior Transition Garden over at the Warrior Transition Unit on Fort Bragg as well. Man, that does so much for people's self-esteem and it value. Does. And if you have any kind of a physical... Well, think about this. In America, every 10 seconds, somebody turns 60. Right. So there's a lot of elderly that... What are you going to do? Join a gym and lift weights? Well, gardening is, you know, body weight exercises. You're lugging dirt around. Absolutely. Fantastic. Good for you. I mean, imagine if more... Well, you're Generation X, no Y. You're. I have no idea. Yeah, you're, but your crazy. generation grew up on video games, right? Yes. We are. Well, I'm from the '90s, yeah. so we had video games, but they aren't quite. They weren't quite as uh, demanding as they are now. And you're telling me that you also teach pro ballroom dancing. I do. That's awesome. Thank you. How long have you been dancing? I have been, well, I've been teaching and dancing for going on four years. Nice. And so you've you've seen the growth because of Dancing with the Stars. I have. show. It's just been so. It's huge. Yeah. Do you know where that show came from? Probably England. England, yes. It's a Fremantle media. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. From Strictly Come Dancing, right? Yep. Yeah, mm-hmm. and uh, then now it's a worldwide phenomenon all over yeah. the world. Good old England. Because I, in- I interview a lot of English gardeners. Mm-hmm. They had a reality TV show about gardening. Uh, that's what I heard. That's what I heard on, yeah, one of the podcasts from before. Like, can you imagine that? when it, it eventually will come to North America. I hope so. You know, and then we'll wreck it. Like, we'll have way too much drama Something. and people pulling hairs and, you know, I fighting. Know. and yeah, yeah. Over seeds. Yeah, overseeds. But that's still anything to raise the awareness in the in the conversation. Yeah. And so you dance, you teach dancing, you're gardening. Talk to me about this season for you, because this was your first kind of next level garden that you personally were responsible for. Yes. What was it like? Um, it was very, it was a lot of fun and it was very successful. Um, I, my grandma has some land out in the country and not only did I get a chance to do the vegetable garden side of it, but I also got to do some landscape annual and perennial planning as well. Mm. Some, you know, some practice with that. And it was awesome. Did you draw stuff out and plan it or are you more of a wing it and just kind of go with the flow? Um... When it came to the landscaping stuff, I didn't write it down because I just kind of put a bunch of stuff that looked pretty next to each other. Mm -hmm. Um, With the vegetable garden, since I had to rip out a bunch of dirt, I had to do a little more planning for that. Wow. Okay. So you actually had to get in and just dig it out and start it from brand new. Yeah. Because she had a very well-established lawn, Mm -hmm. so I had to rip up like four inches of grass Where'd you get the soil delivered? 
Um, no, she had good top or she had good soil underneath the grass. Okay. Because nothing had probably ever been planted there ever. Um, because I got it tested, which is important. Um, and so I just once I got the the grass out, it was good. What did you like? To, what did you grow this season in that garden? Um, this time I grew as everything I could. I had green peppers, jalapenos, two different kinds of beans, carrots, rutabagas, kale, spinach, onions, tomatoes, cantaloupe, squash, sweet potatoes again, some flowers, lavender, basil, okra, pretty much everything that I could fit into that 50 square foot plot I put in there. Nice. Wow, I'm impressed. Rutabagas. Yes. Nice. Love them. And jealous about the sweet potato. I'm not quite in the climate to grow those. Yeah, sweet potatoes. And another surprising thing, I grew those um, in an area which ended up having some rocks underneath where I didn't notice. And the sweet potatoes grew right in the rocks and still came out really nice and pretty big. Okra, man. That's, oh, yeah, yes. wow. And what do you guys, like, fry that up? Oh, no. My husband doesn't allow us to fry okra. Yeah, I didn't think so. That's a southern thing, though, right? I miss fried okra, yes. <laughs> Very good. We stew it a lot. It thickens up stews and sauces, so that's what he tends to use it in. You are way too much to eat all that yourself, though. Do you have, do you give it away or canning? Is I canned um, a lot, um, and I didn't anticipate or I didn't think about how much we actually eat a day, um, you know, per person. So I didn't – not everything succeeded in the vegetable garden, so there was still a lot of produce that I had to buy. So I didn't get to donate anything, um, but yeah. But you can as you grow it bigger. I mean, it's... it's. Oh, yeah. I have 2,800 square feet I'm working on for next year. Oh, man. Shauna Coronado was a guest on the show, and mm-hmm. she said, plant a row for the hungry. And I go, and oh, I plan am- to. That's amazing. I mean, you can give back. Food banks are generally can-driven. Mm-hmm. You know, have here's a can of lima beans. Well, you know, you need that nutrition, especially if you're on a very tight budget. Right. It's amazing. And ours accepts yeah. food. Ours accepts fruit and Fresh, vegetables. Yeah. yeah. Well, good for you. Let's take a minute to thank our sponsors and then come back and play five quick questions. What's the hottest trend in gardening? I think the hottest trend is aquaponics. Can you really grow a massive garden powered by fish? Find out more and discover the secrets to building fish-powered gardens at www.backtomygarden.com front slash fish. Attention garden lovers, do you want to save time, save money, and have your most amazing garden ever? Receive free tips, strategies, and gardening techniques from amazing gardeners around the world. Join the VIP club for free today at www.backtomygarden.com front slash VIP. Okay, now, uh, Jonathan, I just like looked at the clock. And we're at oh, this man. time in the show. I know, it's flying by and we're barely into second gear. We play a game called Five Quick Questions. This is your chance to... Sh- now, I'm, normally I say your wisdom and experience. Right. Hard-fought experience. This is brand new stuff, so it should be fresh in your mind. Uh, you're going to bring a different perspective. So there's people just behind you in the learning curve. They got their first patio garden or mm-hmm. a windowsill with like a tomato on it. and. I want you to go back to when you were just thinking about getting started two years ago. Uh, and amongst your circle of friends, you're probably one of the the, good, the go-to guys for gardening. Question number one is, what do you think stops most people from getting into gardening? Um, I'm going to have to go with thinking about how much work it's going to take. Okay. I like how you went out and found space. I mean, you started with what you had. Yeah. I, I think I've been pretty fortunate, though, about me finding space. A lot of the, you know, when pieces just fall in the right place at the right time, that's kind of pretty much how it's been. Nice. Uh, question two. 
What's the best gardening advice that you've ever received? Um, well, there's two pieces, I guess, and both of them actually came from the podcast, your podcast. One was from Shauna Coronado, which was to plant a row for the hungry. I absolutely 100% agree with that. Um, cause a lot more people need it than we'd like to think. Um, and the second one, I can't remember exactly who said it, but, um, said, if you can't afford to kill it, don't buy it. <laughs> I remember that. Yeah. Which is, which is probably, you know, true in everywhere. When you get into the Master Gardener program, they have uh, seedy Saturdays and seed swaps. I know. That's like a secret society of cool people. I'm so excited. Yeah. Is that a school-driven? Do you have to get some courses? Um, no, it's just a volunteer program. Volunteer here. program. Cool. Yeah. yeah. Uh, question three. Sure. Uh, websites. Do you have one or two websites that you'd like to share with the listeners that maybe you find them useful or a blogs that you read? Um, uh, I use organicgardening.com a lot because mm-hmm. um, it's usually when I Google something, that's the first thing that pops up. Um, and it's not, a, it's not a website, but I do use Pinterest a lot mm-hmm. um, because I'm a really huge DIY person. And nine times out of ten, if you have a problem, somebody else has had the same problem that you have. So you can go and read their blogs and see what they've tried. Yep. Pinterest is like the sleeping giant of social media. It is. Especially with something like gardening. Everybody loves sharing pictures and ideas. It has truly been remarkable doing this podcast how generous and sharing gardeners are as a community. Mm-hmm. You, if you're stuck or have a question, I mean, you go on Garden Chat and boom, somebody knows. Yep. Um, did any, do you have any diseases in your garden this year? Any leaf spot or weird bugs or anything like that? Um. Well, they weren't in my garden, but sometimes my grandma on these bushes, she get it's like the whole plant gets covered in these like white things and they all turn, it all turns kind of gray. Hmm. Um, I don't know what it is, but I just ripped it out of the ground and threw it as far away from everything else as I could. I think that's the difference in thinking is 30 years ago. Oh, let me get some poison and just blast it. Oh no. Yeah. Yeah. You, you said organic gardening. So I assume you're fairly in touch with keeping it natural. Yes. As much as I can. Yeah, I haven't had to use anything crazy so far. When we started composting, then I became aware, like, holy moly, we waste so much food scraps. Yes. I, I couldn't believe it. Like, and it all goes back into the soil. Yep. Man. This is my first year composting, too. And I, I it, yeah, makes you very aware of your waste. In episode 71... Mick over in England, who teaches this stuff, Mm -hmm. he made a deal with an old folks home, a retirement senior center. And the the girls working in the kitchen save all of the kitchen scraps for him. I want to, I wait tables too. Mm -hmm. And at my job, I have, I'm working my way into getting them to give me their, their, you know, tops and bottoms of stuff too. Yeah. It's gold. It's, it's secret gold. Nobody even has a clue. It's worth so much. Yeah. Good, good. A question four. Gardening books. Do you have a, gar- a favorite gardening book? Um, I've got, again, these are, there are two, and I use them hand in hand. Um, the first one is The Gardener's Index of Plants and Flowers. Hmm. Um, mine is a pretty old one. I got it at a book sale. Um, it's from 1987. It's by Jonathan Brooks and Kenneth Beckett and Thomas Everett and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the second one is my Rodell's encyclopedia of organic gardening yeah. which is like it's my dictionary yeah. wow good stuff question number five is a fun one no right or wrong mm-hmm. answer just look into your crystal ball what's something that you haven't grown yet that you're itching to try and grow next season hmm that I haven't grown yet yep something brand new that you might want to try next year. 
I actually want to try um, a fruit tree. Oh, wow. Um, Because the space that I'm going to get is going to give me enough space that I I can plant um, a tree. But I can't decide if I want apple trees or if I want a fig tree. Okay. Okay, listeners, if you're hearing this, hit Jonathan up on Twitter at GardenYoung13. If you have any experience or advice around apple trees or fig trees. Of course, for figs, I'd recommend checking out Stephen Biggs' blog. Okay. Uh, He wrote a book called uh, Fig Pig. Okay. Stephen Biggs' Fig Pig, or uh, am I getting it backwards? He's here in Toronto. (laughs) And one of the episodes, I can tell you which episode, I got him, I met him through uh, Nikki Jabour's book. And he wrote the chapter on figs for Nikki Jabour. Hang on, let's find him here. Stephen Biggs, episode 28. Uh, StephenBiggs.ca. He is the genius on figs. And because he's probably two or three zones colder than you, he would probably say you got to grow figs. Yeah. An interesting thing about figs is the flowers are on the inside. I didn't know that. I knew nothing about figs until four months ago when one showed up on my back doorstep. Oh, nice. (laughs) And I go to my, what's this? Oh, well, you were doing that podcast about figs, so I went and bought a fig tree. Oh, nice. Um, Where I am is a little too cold to leave it out over the winter. Oh. So it's in my garage where my golf clubs used to be. I I don't golf much anymore anyhow. (laughs) I'm too busy gardening, so. Right. It's like a roommate. It's living in my garage. That's cool. Well, very cool. You have your own your own little orchard. I'm working up to it. Nice. Um, that was question five. Tell me about your jalapenos. We've got a minute or two left. Sure. How was the hot stuff for you? Oh, it was profusely the whole season. Yeah, giving me stuff, and they were they were pretty nice size. Maybe you know some got to be almost three inches long. Mm-hmm. And they were really hot. I had too many near the end of the season. And you know you're kind of fighting the weather. So Mm -hmm. I go, what am I going to do with these? I sliced them up and threw them in a little uh, Gladware container in the freezer. I'd never frozen jalapenos before. Mm -hmm. They are fantastic frozen. They are. Yep. And they're still just as spicy. Yep. Yeah, they got the heat. I'm 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 slowly going down that slippery slope of becoming a pepperhead. Yes. Yeah. Because I'm getting so, a. Go ahead. I'm no, go ahead, dear. Um, I have uh, three seeds that I'm going to try next year. Uh, the peppers, a couple of different kinds. Nice. Yeah, you got the weather for it. I mean, you're in that nice mm-hmm. Carolinas. Are you in the mountain? No, you're in the hills, right? I am in the sand hills. Yeah. Not quite Piedmont, not quite East um, Coastal Plains. You had to pretty much water every other day then throughout the summer? Um, yes. Yeah. But that's good drainage. Your tomatoes would be happy. Didn't get a single one. Come on. None. Interesting. My cherry tomatoes, the ones that I bought, I had a, a hundred. My other ones, I had like six plants, not a single one. Same thing with my squash, not a single one. Soil test, maybe? Go in and take a look at the testing. Something about phosphorus. Yep. I did that chemistry set a couple times in one of my beds. um, Three zucchini plants, no no fruit, all male flowers. Mm -hmm. And, yeah, like I said. And, of course, the levels, I had an 8.0, which for those of you who wrote in and said, David, 8.0 is alkaline, not acid. I know. I always get them backwards. Part of my... Science, but 8.0, I mean, it would nothing. I'm amazed anything grows in it. Yeah. But I wouldn't want to make fruit either if I was a zucchini in an 8.0. But hey, for your first season of gardening, man, you did pretty awesome, didn't you? Thanks. Yeah, yeah I'd like to think so. Um, my only big brotherly advice is chronicle it. Lots of photos on your Twitter feed next year, people. Will, I will definitely do it. Yeah. yeah. There you go, folks. Jonathan Leonard from Fayetteville, North Carolina. Second season of gardening. First real big outdoor garden. Bountiful harvest. 
Uh, hit Jonathan up on Twitter. Follow him at GardenYoung13 and share his stuff. And welcome him to the gardening community. Jonathan, you're an awesome guest. I'm going to have you back every season. Keep the chronicle going. Yeah. Thank you so much. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I did. Kind of went fast, didn't it? It does. I want to give you the last word to the listeners today. Do you have a pearl of wisdom or a note of encouragement for our listeners on their gardening adventures? Um, if it doesn't grow this time, give it a week and plant it again and see if it'll grow that time. Nice. Very good. Jonathan, appreciate you very much. Thanks for being on the show. Thank you.